Welcome back. Um, we're going to do a slightly more complicated transfer function here. We're going to find um, Z2 as a function of um, our, an input force F of T. Actually, we'll do it in the Laplace domain where F of T is applied to right there. So it's a little more complicated because we have this with two masses, two springs, one damper. Uh, here's the equations of motion already written out for us in nice, neat form, make it easier to read than my handwriting. Um, and for this exercise, I'm just going to do pencil and paper, chug it through real quickly, and just as one more example of a more complicated system. But the basic concepts and process is pretty much the same. So I have two equations here. Um, I want to get one transfer function when it's all said and done. So what I need to do is essentially I want Z2. So if I take this second equation here and I solve it for Z1, then I can substitute that back in. So I can say that um, Z1 equals M2 over K2 S squared times, oops, well, I, I, let me back up one step. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to put these in S domain just because <laughs> that's where we're going. So I get, and then I'll solve it, skip the step, M1 S squared Z1, this is our first equation, plus B1 S Z1 plus K1 plus K2 Z1 minus K2 Z2 or Z2, depending on what country you're from, F of T. And this this K1, K2 here, that comes from that if you were to look at the force for K1, K1 equals, um, well, F of K1, the force from K1 is going to be F K1 equals K1 times Z1, and F of spring 2, K2, equals K2 um, times, and because both ends of that spring are moving, the delta change in that spring is going to be Z2 minus Z1. And we're assuming that at Z2, and Z1 equals zero, those springs are at their natural zero force relaxed position. So then I rearrange that slightly to get get the Z1 terms and Z2 terms, and I, I end up with that piece right there. Okay, so that's the first one in Laplace. The second one, by inspection, M to S squared Z of S, Z2 of S. I didn't write the S's above, did I? S squared Z2 of S. I'll, I'm not going to go back. Um, and obviously, you can see I'm ignoring the initial conditions. We're just going to look at the uh, particular solution or the, the, the forced response, which is what we're asked for here. Um, what is the relationship between the Z2 and the input force? We're not asked in this problem what is the response due to the initial conditions. And that's really a pretty typical thing to do um, when you're doing stability analysis and control systems analysis. You know, the initial conditions, unless there's something really bizarre, they're gone in a couple seconds. And you know, if I'm driving from here to Toledo, um, why I'd want to go to Toledo is beyond me. But if I, if I was driving from here to Toledo and I had my autonomous control, you know, the initial conditions are gone before I get out of the parking lot, and I'm going to focus on controlling the car as I pull out on a, on the 10 mile and on the freeways and everything else. And, okay, so we're ignoring the initial conditions, and then I've got uh, sidetrack there, uh, and I have K to Z2 and K to Z1 equals zero. So I can solve this second equation here for Z1, and I get 
V1 equals M2 over K2, correct me if I'm wrong, S squared times Z2 of S and plus K1, excuse me, K2 over K2, Z2 of S. And those, of course, just go to 1. So I can substitute back, I can substitute this expression for all the places where I have Z1 in that first equation. And I get a mess. That's what I get. I get a mess. Well, here it is. Let's write it out anyhow. I can say that, and I'll start over here, M1S squared times M2 over K2S squared plus 1 times Z2 of S plus B1S times that same thing again, M2 over K2 S squared plus 1. And this is again times Z2 of S. And I'm going to wrap plus wrap as in wrap around, not as in hip hop. Um, you knew that. You don't want me to do hip hop, do you? No. <laughs> okay, getting punchy here. K1 plus K2. Well, this, these, are, these videos are just so much fun. I mean, you know, what could be more fun? Um, I'm sure you guys are just looking forward to these. M2 over K2 S plus 1. That's, you know, again, just that quick substitution times, as you expect, Z2 of S minus, oh, I'm running out of room, K2 Z2 of S equals F of S, okay? Oops, moving the wrong thing here. Hang on, hang on. This can be done. I made my window just a little bit too in the wrong spot. Like I grabbed the edge of my sharing window and not what I need to do. Okay, so there's our equation. It's a mess. I can clean it up, put it in transfer function format so I can take the Z2 out and um, Z2 of S over F of S. And, well, let, let's, yeah, let's just let's do that. And I'm going to multiply it out. I'm going to take one giant leap of algebra here uh, because I know that I'm going to end up with, well, if I want Z2 of S all over here on the left, all those terms are going to end up in the denominator on the other side in F of S here. So I'm going to end up with a 1 over a whole bunch of things. M1, M2 over K2, S to the fourth. So that's multiplying this times this. And then I multiply, oops, undo M1 of S times 1. So I just, that's just plus M1 S squared plus B1. M2 over K2 S cubed plus B1S, no comments on that, please, plus K1 plus K2 all over K2 times M2 times S squared. I'll be able to combine that with another S squared term plus K1 plus K2 minus K2. And these, that's a 2. And those, those two will cancel each other out, so that just leaves K1. 
I've got some squared terms I can join together. I've only got one s to the fourth, one s to the third. So if I rewrite this just a little bit, I'll get my final result, and this will be probably the shortest video I've done so far, right? So my transfer function is z2 of s over f of s equals 1 over m1, m2 over k2, s to the fourth, plus b1, m2 over k2, s cubed, plus m1 plus k1 plus k2 times m2, and that bit there is over k2, and that's my s squared, and I'm going to kind of cheat this and wrap it around again. This is still in the denominator. I've got b1 s plus k1. Okay, so that denominator kind of continues over here. Um, and that is my transfer function. It's ugly, okay, but it wasn't rocket science in terms of deriving it. We just did a little bit of algebra. We did the substitutions. You know, we converted it to Laplace domain and, and turned the crank. And when you look at it, you know, M1, M2, K1, K2, B1, these are all known parameters. So I could substitute all those for, you know, I could put the numbers in and, and I'd have a fairly neat equation, you know, some constant times s to the fourth, some constant times s to the third, some constant times s squared times s plus, you know, uh, the last constant. And it, and it would be a fairly straightforward fourth order transfer function. I can put it into MATLAB easy, easy enough using a transfer function um, command and things like that. And I could manipulate it, and you know we can we can analyze how this is behaved and how what happens when we change parameters and all kinds of things. I you know would probably put it in a script file where I define m1, m2, k2, etc., and then I'd write out this whole transfer function in terms of those variables, and then create you know to create the linear time invariant system using a transfer function command, and then I can do a uh, Step responses, Bode plots, whatever I need to do. But as I, if I want to explore changing the damping coefficient or changing spring constants, I can just change those in one place, run the script again, and it all comes out nicely for me. So, with that, I'll say goodbye, and uh, we'll see what what comes up next.